Hello, welcome to this video where I'm going to teach you how you can transform something like this that you usually get in ClickFunnels to something that looks much more cleaner, just like this, right? So it has a little bit of CSS, but it's easy to understand. So make sure that you follow along. So the first thing we want to understand is the structure. How this is structured. We need to divide this in two columns for the large text and the paragraph. And then we need to create a three column row for the submit button and the join the email list. So let's do exactly that, okay? I'm going to add here a three columns, add a new element, which is going to be the input, and then add a new element, which is going to be the button. Now, the next step is to get this button in advanced. We want it to be fill width, okay? The second step is notice that we have a gap there. We want to remove that gap. So in order for us to do that, we need to go to the columns and then we need to navigate through it to see where these columns are. So let's go ahead to the second column and then click settings. Now here we have left and right in the padding. Go ahead and remove um, everything. You need, you need to um, scroll and then scroll again or just type zero and enter. Okay, this is going to allow us to remove that extra thing that was there. Now, there's still a little bit of gap there. I know that. So I'm just going to go to get CSS info and I'm going to copy only the call center. Okay, not the call inner. You don't want this one. You want just this one. So you're going to go ahead and copy it and go to the CSS. Now here we are going to paste it and open the brackets. That's the first step. We are getting into the CSS. Now, right after that, see how we get that gap there? So what we want to do is simply adding padding zero, and that is going to remove 100% of the padding on the right and on the left side. Got it? Now, what we need to do is do the exact same thing for the other column, for this input. So go ahead to columns, search for the column, the right column, drag to get to zero, get the CSS info, copy the call left, and then the exact same thing. And here you can even do comma and then add this one here. And now, as you can see, it already starts to attach, but it doesn't look similar to that one yet because we need to adjust a couple of things. So the first thing is we are going to adjust the input here. So for this, we want to go to settings to the input and we're going to go to get CSS info and copy this CSS ID. Now, after we do that, go back to custom CSS, paste it there and open brackets. So in order for us to change this, what we need to understand is we need to remove um, the borders. So we are going to set border to zero pixels and then we are going to set it as important. Now, right after that, what we want to do is set a border radius because just check this out here on the right, the uh, top right and bottom right, we don't have any border. So it's attached to the submit button. But here we have a border of five or 10 pixels. So that's exactly what we want to do, because in this example, we have a five pixel border throughout the entire thing. But Pedro, you can go to settings, advanced, and then adjust the coordinates right there. The only problem with that is that it's going to adjust all the coordinates for you. So you don't, you, you either go to square edges and then on the left side, you have just square edges or you need CSS to do that. So let's go ahead to settings and custom. Now here, what we need to do is set up a border radius. And now we want, are going to, um, to, to set each corner individually. So what we start is clockwise, is top left, top right, bottom right, the bottom left. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. For the top left, we are going to set it for 10 pixels. For the top right, we are going to set it for zero pixels to be square. And then for the bottom left, we are going to set the bottom right, we are going to set it for zero pixels as well. And then for the bottom left, we're going to set it for 10 pixels. And we also we are going to set it for important. So these are the two steps that we need for the input, right? But as you can see, nothing changed. And the, the, the main reason why is because we click funnels, we need to add something else to target these specific type of elements, which is an element input. When we do this, you notice already that you can see there that it changed automatically. All right. So we are getting closer and closer to the final uh, detail. What we need to do, we need to duplicate this to the other button. All right. So go to the button, get to settings, get to CSS info and copy this button ID. Fairly simple. Go back to the custom CSS uh, um, and then paste it and open some brackets. Now, what you need to do is the exact same thing. 
right? So let's go ahead and set a border to zero pixels so they are together and set it as important. And now we need to go and adjust the, bo the border on the top right and the bottom right because um, actually we can also adjust it the same way as we did here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here, remember clockwise. So here we want a zero pixels. Here we want a zero pixels as well. Probably this one we want a, a, a 10 pixels on the top right corner. Now this one we want on the bottom right corner we want 10 pixels as well. And then on the bottom left corner we want zero pixels. Now this is set to important because it is important to override everything. But again, as you can see, the button has uh, didn't change. The main reason why is because we still need the element to be targeted. So in this case, it's L button. Now, as soon as I do this, you already see automatically the changes. Okay. So Pedro, that doesn't look exactly the same as that one. Right. Let's just adjust the little details now. So join the email list is one of the changes. Okay, then we have the submit button. So submit. And now what we need to do is to drag that this handling here to be to the same size. Now there's one little detail uh, that is going to make a huge difference as well, which is the alignment with this element with these other text elements. So what we're going to do for this example is we're going to go to columns and we are going to check for this large uh, call to action row. So we're going to click there and now we're going to drag the left to the right. We're going to copy the CSS info, just that one. Okay. And now we're going to go to custom. And lastly, we are going to go to setting padding zero and then voila. What you got yourself here was a complete build out from scratch. So you can have something like this in your pages. So now go ahead, test it out and let me know how it goes. Cheers.